finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Thanks for coming back. If you're a previous watcher of the channel, if you're new, please uh, tap subscribe, leave a comment, and of course, hit thumbs up. It does help the channel. I want to take a look at this, uh, bring a trailer listing that started, of course, a few days ago. Now, or at the time of this recording, we're down to two days, um, which would have it ending on a Monday. I often uh, wonder if what the science is behind uh, ending it on a Monday versus a weekend. I know uh, being a longtime eBay seller and buyer, I often would try to end things on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It just seemed like that was the the better thing to do. But um, I'll, I'm always curious if anybody has any insight into does bring a trailer allow you to pick when it starts or do they just start it at a certain point? You would think that they would want it to end on a particular day that would drive more money, like such as a weekend, although this weekend at the time of this recording is Easter weekend 2023. So depending on when you're watching it, that's maybe why they bumped it to end on a Monday. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, do you think it really plays any factor? Okay, this is a 66 Lincoln Continental convertible acquired by the current owner back in 1989. So uh, 34 years ago. Now it underwent basically a, uh, a refinish uh, by Baker's Auto. So for some of you guys may be familiar with the name Baker's Auto. They were up in Putnam, Connecticut. Uh, I think they basically, for some, a lot, of, a lot of us, when we hear Baker's Auto, we think the first word that comes to mind is they had a fire. And I, I do believe um, that caused them to maybe shut down. Uh, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, I bought parts from them many years ago for my 67. Uh, f I know people have been using them a long time. And anytime you would see a car that was basically refurbished by Baker's Auto, in this case, you would you know that they knew what they were doing. Um, now, the refurbishment was in uh, 98. So that was about 10 years after they had acquired it. Uh, basically, what we want to look at here is a couple of things. It is the dark green metallic uh, paint. So to me, this is kind of cool. It's something a little bit different. It's maybe not going to appeal to everyone, especially because oftentimes folks want a black Lincoln. But to me, this is a dark color. It looks great. Um, it's something a little bit different than you typically see, which is awesome. It has 84,000 miles shown. It uh, has the Palomino tan leather upholstery. I've often talked about the Palomino uh, in some of my social media posts. Um, I think it was introduced in 64, I think. And um, it's a color you don't see very often. I, I've I've tried to kind of ask people what they thought. How rare is it? I don't know that it's the most rare, but I think overall it is, it is kind of rare, uh, generally speaking. It does have an AM radio with an 8-track player. I don't know. I've seen that very often. You can see the 8-track sticking out of the dash. You'll see that in a moment. Additional work was completed after the uh, refurbishment uh, consisting of installing electronic ignition, which typically is going to be like a Patronics, uh, replacing the driver's side fender. So I know some people would, um, that would be a huge turnoff if there was kind of some major reconstruction there in terms of, uh, you know, a typical car changing the fender is no big deal with these being a unibody. Uh, you can do it right. Um, but if it was me looking at the car, I would want to kind of get underneath it and see, you know, was the fender swap done pretty cleanly? And the reason being is it says this was done after the rebuild of the car, or they're using the word refurbishment. Um, so there's no telling when that was done and who did it. Uh, the convertible top motor, the heater core, rechroming the front bumper, servicing the window mech, uh, installing Optima battery. Uh, the convertible is now offered with a shop manual and things such as that. So to me, um, they put some money into this. You're going to see uh, in some of the photos, they do have some good documentation. Um, we can see, I believe it has the uh, trailer hitch option, 
which there was an option available uh, kind of through Ford. I have documentation that I've kind of collected over the years on that. Although there's a couple of different ones, I think, when you get to some of these years. Is, is it really an aftermarket one? Is it a Ford option one? This one you're going to see you wouldn't want to tow anything too heavy with. So, um, you know, we'll kind of look at that in a second here. Uh, the dark metallic is the R code. Um, it kind of just goes into all your basic stuff here. You know, when it talks about what it has, a lot of that stuff is real basic because as I've said over the years, uh, these cars came highly option. The left sub, uh, fender support rod had been painted and installed and a couple of minor things there. Of course they did have 15s in 66. Um, those actually started in 64 and it talks about the, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, sometimes I often wonder, uh, does anyone watch this channel from Bring a Trailer? Obviously, they've got people that will kind of handhold you through this whole process and do this right up. But I love that they went through the detail to list the date codes on the tires. Like I've said in the past, although if you've got the money to spend on a nice car like this or an exotic type car, you're typically going to have the money to go turn right around and get tires and things like that. But you never know. Uh, if this is your dream car and you're looking to buy it and then you have it delivered – um, after paying, of course, a transport fee on top of selling or purchasing the car, you know, you don't want to have to turn around and go buy tires and start fixing a bunch of stuff. You want to be able to kind of turn the key and enjoy it somewhat. But again, they went through the detail to mention the, um, the tire year. Uh, we can see down here, it kind of goes into some more detail. I'm kind of just going through this a little quickly because the photos tell a little bit better story. Uh, this dash looks really, really nice. Uh, you can see the eight tracks sticking out here. Uh, it does say that the air condition does not blow cold, which is typical in these cars. You rarely will see one, although the gentleman that was selling uh, the sedan recently, it actually, um, I'll try to give an update at the end of that, at the end of this video. Uh, the sedan that was being sold recently didn't hit the reserve. And what that meant was that, um, it didn't sell, but <laughs> where I'm getting at is the AC on that one actually was blowing cold. So it's very rare. People even commented on that sedan that um, it was rare that the, that the AC was working. But anyways, that's a different car. Back on track here. The total mileage is unknown. So I, I like how they, they give this disclaimer because you just never know. And I think that's this is the better way to spell it out. Um, for instance, in my 64, when I got my 64, the speedometer wasn't working. Well, the speedometer worked, the odometer did not. Um, so since the engine's been rebuilt and I've done all this stuff to it, the odometer still isn't working. I kind of keep track of how many miles are on it. Maybe there's about 1,000 to 1,500 miles since the rebuild. Um, but, you know, again, you just never know what the mileage is. <laughs> And it kind of just goes into some basic stuff. They did a deep cycle yellow top. I don't really think a yellow top is necessary in these cars. I've ran Optima batteries for almost, I'd say about 25 years, since 97, uh, 98. I bought my first uh, Optima. I love the batteries. I've just found that a yellow top, a deep cycle, isn't really necessary in an automotive application. But others may, uh, you know, feel differently about that. Uh, the voltage regulator was replaced, a couple just basic things here. And we can see, I love that they include the photo uh, uh, showing us this information, and they break this information down. Again, bring a trailer, I think, uh, is just, they do great at this. And um, what we learn here is 53 is Oakland uh, DSO destination sales office, so in or around the Oakland area. Uh, this car was delivered to. So basically that tells us it's a California car, less likely to have any kind of rust unless, of course, it could have always been transported out of there and it could have lived in a you know different part of the country. But again, that's not, not typical. It was sold here and it's still in California. If we scroll up here, should have mentioned uh, it's in LA now, Los Angeles. And we'll go back down. Um, they've got some videos which we'll go ahead and you guys know I kind of mute these out what they're doing here is fantastic and look what they sh show here so he closes the door showing the auto drop works goes back up I mean these guys are doing like 
this is fantastic. This is what we want to see. No motor running, top mechanism down. Now, some people will tell you, hey, it's not good to put the top down if the car's not running. John Cashman, I remember he used to say this. If it's okay to do one or two cycles, like maybe you cycle it like they're doing, the top is they're going through the top down cycle and then it's down, and then maybe you want to put it up. Um, that came up. I know someone, um, kind of a friend of ours, he had commented on a video the other day. I was using my remote control on my car, which is an aftermarket thing to put the top down. And the person commented and said, Hey, you know, my, my tidbit of information would be it's best to have the car running when you're putting the top down. And I, I could see where you could say that, um, you know, I wouldn't do it all day. Um, but like John Cashman, I believe used to say, and I've seen him, if I recall correctly, mention this to people that you can do the cycle once, maybe twice. Um, you know, typically again, you're not going to want to keep doing it. You'd want to start the car at some point, get the voltage back up in the battery, but you can see there, he put the top down and then he's going to do the top up cycle. Now, uh, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know, he's utilizing in 66, 67, it was an option. It certainly was not um, standard. There is a switch here, basically, that when he inserts the key, he you just saw the top down cycle. This is the top up, and that is all based upon the switch, and it is a keyed switch. So you put the key in just like you're going to start the car, and you turn it one way right or you turn it left. I think right is to put it down, and I and left would be to put it up. That's the way my brain, but I could be wrong on that. Um, this way my brain kind of thinks of it. You can see there, once this latches down, the flapper goes down, and then the deck lid, the final, well, the deck lid comes down, and then these locks are going constantly, and it's going to take a second. They're locking, 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 and then you're going to hear the click, 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 and then you let off, and then boom, it's done. So nice job there. Um, we're going to just go through this right here, cold start videos, and see, they're, I mean, they're just going through a, a good amount of detail. Now, one thing I would recommend, one thing I would mention is it looked like he started the car there and he, he got out of the car, and it looks like the reason why I turned it up is it did look like it, it is running. I have said this time and time again. Some people will tell you 64, 65 is the worst years for this to happen, but it can happen in these years, and it's not just Lincolns. It, it can be other Fords, okay? Other people will tell you this. You can Google it. There's even videos on YouTube. These cars are known to jump into reverse, and when we say jump into reverse is think of the steering column when it's in park. If it falls down one gear and it it goes into reverse it's going to hit if it's running it's going to run right into this wall and it's going to dent the bumper and it's going to potentially and definitely if it's a brick wall it's going to cause more damage so just know if you're watching this video i've said this for a long time others will tell you as well do not leave these cars running without the foot on the brake um that's definitely important but basically what they're trying to do here is kind of show you it's a cold start they're using their little digital thermometer deal um, to kind of give a little bit of intel there. Um, again, they've got more videos. We'll just kind of skim through these real quick. Walk around video. They're giving you the dates, kind of reinforcing that hey, that, that this, you know, this wasn't like today. This was a couple weeks ago. And the more the merrier with all this stuff. So they've got them labeled really nicely. So 66 convertible, top-down neighborhood cruise, Malibu Pacific Coast Highway, which is also known as PCH. Okay, so there's a couple videos. So let's take a look at the car. So we can see the headlights are on, top is up. It's a 66, we know, because if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 9. I think there's 9 bars and there's 11 bars. That's the diff difference in 60. Six versus 67, so it always gets me. 
So there's nine there. And then you've got the star. So that that that's the that's the tell, if you will, uh sixty six to sixty seven. If you guys know of any other ways, like from this angle to tell, let me know. But for the most part, the star is the dead giveaway. If the star has been removed and the little hole is shaved, um, it makes it a lot tougher. You know, typically you're not gonna go depending on the quality of the, the photo, you may not be able to count the bars, but again, sixty six, sixty seven very similar and both do include or have this option for the switch back here we can see the trailer hitch here again that's not going to be for everybody um these cars you know people would hook up campers to them uh there's no doubt about it um they would hook little boats my friend blair farmer you know he would hook a boat up to his and that's just what they did and you could do that still uh depending on you know the weight and things like that of course you can see the headlights on here top down photos looking nice uh this is a nice car so far with you can see the windows up so that's telling us the windows you know are operating um so far this car i think was at forty two thousand with two days left pretty solid number I, i'm guessing it's going to go between my guess is 60 and 65. I mean, these the popularity in these cars continue to go up. And because it was Baker's Auto, even though it was 35 years ago, uh, well, 25 years ago, um, they've owned it since 89. It was restored in basically 98. Um, you can see what looks to be a little imperfection here. This might be able to be just buffed out. Uh, but these bumper ends look really good. You know, these being big cars... Um, it's, you, you'll definitely see from time to time dents and dings in, in this, but, you know, being that this car was restored 25 years ago and it only has 84 ish thousand miles, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, it means like this car is kind of babied, if you will. Um, we can see everything kind of looks good here. Um, some of these pieces are made out of pot metal. Um, I think most of this is right here. Um, of course, this is stainless, these peak bowlings. But you see here the difference in the stainless versus right here where it's got some of the pitting. And th th these will look like this over the course of time. Not all places re-chrome pot metal, but I believe this entire piece right here is pot metal, including this. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something to call out. That's why there's a difference. And when you polish it, it'll even look a little bit different. Now, if you have these high speed polished, these stainless peak moldings, they'll kind of look more like this, like a chrome look to them. It kind of drives me crazy on the TV shows. They'll always talk about, oh, we got to take all the chrome off. And, you know, a lot of times, especially on these cars, is it stainless? I know that's like a technicality, but... Um, stainless is different than chrome, of course. 66, again, I've mentioned this before. I still like that the seats, um, these are, um, the seats change in 67, basically. So this seat here resembles everything from a 61 all the way up to this year, which is a 66. I kind of call it like a normal low back seat when you start getting the 67. Um, you don't have this trim here. It's, it's just a little bit different look. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you look at them, you'll see. We can see inside here it looks good. You do have a locking gas cap again with gas prices being as high as they were. I can imagine someone maybe thinking that someone's going to siphon out their fuel. Uh, I've talked about these also being pot metal and 66. These look really, really good. If this was an area where it was like Ohio or somewhere where there was a lot of uh, snow and salt and things like that. I mean, these things can just be like pretty, pretty horrible, but these look great. Uh, we can see this piece in here. You can get a lot of this from steel rubber, but these little pieces in here, um, look, look to be really, really nice. Assuming they were changed, maybe when bakers did their thing. Uh, but we just don't hundred percent know, uh, but they look great, which is key. I'm just going to kind of jump ahead here. They are showing a little bit of detail. Uh, you can imagine a top that's, you know, almost 60 years old. Uh, definitely, you know, a lot of times these tops need to be redone. Depending on where you live, I've got a really nice 65, and the top to me is nice. You know, Robert was like, well, hey, it comes with another convertible top, um, you know, the material. But if the top is often down, you know, you don't really see it. So, you know, this this would be up to the person if they want to maybe make their car perfect. Uh, they would maybe opt to spend the money to have the top swapped out. Uh, you can see here where the visor connects. They're just showing some of the imperfections in here. And um, it's good. I'd rather have more detail so you can make an educated decision on 
if you want to buy this car. You could see here, I mean, you could maybe um, say this looks a little dingy. You know, you, you would be able to clean this up, you know, with some soap and water. I use Griot's Garage products. Um, certainly, you could, you know, if you lived in California, you're probably going to want to have the top down. We can see another Lincoln back here, so that, that interests me. I can see the um, the reflection of the gentleman here. I always wonder if that's the seller or is it a seller that wants to be hands off and maybe he knows a place or has a mechanic shop or maybe these guys are listing it, you know, um, on consignment, if you will. You just never really know, but it's always intriguing to me to kind of think through what, what is the process on, on this car. Um, we can see here it is in position. It looks like they're going to put it on a lift and they do. Um, here we can kind of see this little area, including the dog leg in the back. I always like to look in here to see does what does it look like. They're typically not perfect in here. This looks about standard, uh, but it will sometimes show if if there's you know a lot of Bondo and stuff. You can kind of see something's going on. We can see the inner uh, fender wells are in here, splash guards, whatever you want to call them. Um, to me, this looks like someone went in here at some point and resprayed all this just with some black paint. Certainly that's not a bad thing. Um, I always like to just say, Hey, if that's, if that was done, just make sure you're checking all this to ensure that it doesn't have, um, anything hidden in there. See a little bit of overspray in here again, nothing bad. I mean, uh, that's, that's not a deal breaker to me. I mean, it is what it is. They're showing some detail on the tire. Those tires look a little older than 2019, but, um, they did mention that and they probably are 2019. You just don't know, you know, in terms of there, they look a lot better. So, um, they've got the smaller white wall, which people like picture of the tag. There's a lot of photos of this one. I think over 200 photos. Uh, we could see here the courtesy lights are on. So we see one, two, we can't see these. We see the light on under here as well. So it's kind of showing you, you know, things are working on this car. Um, one thing that does not look right to me on this and the thing that is my biggest pet peeve so far is the carpet. At some point to me, I don't know what it is. And you, when you guys could chime in and you might say, Hey, this is factory carpet. The carpet looks very similar to here. And I know there were some weird options and I sometimes will get this wrong. This carpet doesn't look factory to me. And let's say it was factory. Okay, this carpet is a is a good example of one that needs to be changed, in my opinion. Now, you could steam clean it, and I've seen some people, some people I watch on YouTube, and they do a phenomenal job. But you could go to Jim Wallace; he could get a new carpet kit, and he puts the heel he puts the heel pad into the carpet. Um, so this, I don't know that this is factory. I would love for someone to chime in. Um, I know the factory has the heel pad. I don't know that the factory has the heel pad sewed over the actual carpet, but regardless, you could see, hey, is it um, something you could live with? Possibly. You could see I would take the mats out as well. Um, these uh, belt buckles are correct, seat belts. So those are the correct ones for the year. You can see, again, the 8-track there. And I'm just kind of jumping around here. You can see... The carpet, again, just doesn't look right here. Um, but that is minor. I mean, believe it or not, you could easily change the carpet yourself if you wanted to or take it to a local upholstery place. I do believe it has tilt wheel. I do believe it does because you can kind of see here where it looks like it's tilted up. Remember, 66 is different than the tilt wheel in 64 and 65. So it's not vacuum operated in 66. It would be a little bit easier for someone to work on Underneath the doors look really, really good. Uh, I've seen some that are really rusted out, and these look fantastic. To me, the seats look great. Um, I know one thing in the past that I made a mistake on is I mentioned not seeing the seat switch here. On the bench seat, it does not have the switch over here. So I was thinking about um, I've had a, several sets of bucket seats over the years, and the bucket seats do have a switch over here. And um, so in 66, with this bench, you would just have the switch on that side. So I want to mention that. We can see the dash is not cracked. It doesn't look like it's been redone. Um, certainly, there are there's a couple companies that it's very expensive to redo a dash. I just saw one that was redone. This one actually looks really, really good. 
and I can't remember. I think 67 is more uh, prone to crack here. Um, you actually have this little gap up here on 66 that I actually kind of like versus 67, and the defroster is up there. So that's a minor difference in 66 versus 67. Everything's looking good here. Um, one thing that Chris Dunn from Lincoln Land pointed out to me recently is um, you got the black switches here, which those are factory correct. Um, I know these videos tend to get a little long, so I'm going to start to try to wrap it up here. Uh, engine bay looks good. We can see it has the three port, which is fantastic. 66 was the last year of the um, single reservoir, okay? I haven't covered that enough in terms of, you know, what year. So, in 67 had a dual. This has a dual reservoir for the brake setup. So, um, good stuff there. Um, to me, engine bay looks really, really clean. You can see the AC compressor here. Uh, the fan shroud looks really, really good, and everything looks good. Uh, this is a car that you might just try to charge the AC. I mean, have a local place charge it. Um, if it still wasn't working, then you would want to go maybe a different route and, and do what I'm doing. I need to finish mine on my 65 and kind of start replacing stuff. Um, you could see here the trailer hitch. I think they have a, a done their photo of it. Uh, underneath the car looks pretty clean. Typically, you'll sometimes see this to me is, I don't know, I can't tell if somebody came in here and cleaned all this with like a pressure washer because you'll sometimes see this undercoating has it like kind of fallen off in these areas, but it's not a bad thing. I mean, to me, if somebody came in here and tried to clean all this up and make it look nicer, that's fine, but you'll start to see where, again, the undercoating has been removed and it could be from a pressure washer. It could have just fallen off over time. It's hard to kind of say. It does look like someone at some point has resprayed some of the floorboards, but there's nothing underneath here that is alarming. This all looks solid to me. Really, really nice. Again, looks like newer black paint. I like to look in here to kind of see is there anything funny going on, and to me there is not. Uh, this is what I wanted to point out. So these hitches sometimes are a little bit different. I do believe in 60... Six, I have seen some like this where they're literally bolted um, up here through the bumper and things like that. Um, or you can see this little panel. I think this was the factory option where it's bolted here with like four bolts and then you've got this. Um, again, you wouldn't be towing a lot. I mean, I would never tar tow a car trailer with this. Let's just say that, right? A small camper, you might be surprised. You might be able to pull fine a little boat. Uh, don't know that you probably would. I mean, whoever buys this car more than likely isn't. Um, but I always find the trailer hitches um, kind of cool to see on there. You got the original shop manual. You've got a cover. Um, something here that ties into the story. Maybe one of the previous owners. This is fantastic. You can get a chance to see some of the rest restoration photos. Uh, this is typical um, for the battery tray to have that rust hole. So all that presumably was fixed and then there's a ton of paperwork i'm not going to go through it it looks fantastic here you can see the lights on at night again if nothing else someone did a very very nice write-up they provided a lot of good photos and this car to me it's going to sell itself because of the baker's auto tied to it the color is a little bit unique the interior again something you don't see every day it's a you know convertible presumably it looks like the windows and top work fine and it's just a nice car overall. Is it perfect? No. And I will say this. Typically, you're you're never going to find a perfect car. Like my friend TC, she always says, they always need something. And um, this is a nice one. So if you decide to go for it, have fun. And um, let us know what you think. Comment below if you're the buyer. Take care. Stay on the rise. 42,000. Two days left. Subscribe if you haven't. ODB. The Lincoln Addict, we're out of here.